okay, so that's another thing we could mention briefly. I have a uh, website called understandmyself.com, and I set up a coupon code for your viewers. Oh, okay. yeah, what is so it? So it's H3H3. Oh, uh, what cool. Say that so you are the domain Understandmyself.com. Okay. And you can go there and take a personality test that was devised in my lab. Uh, the main researcher was Dr. Colin DeYoung, who is now a professor at the University of Minnesota. But we took the standard big five trait model, which is the standard modern personality model. So that's extroversion, which is a positive emotion dimension. And extroverted people are enthusiastic and assertive. So you're both enthusiastic. You're really assertive. That would be my guess. I can be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't be doing this sort of thing if, yeah, if okay. you weren't extroverted. Okay, right? sure. Yeah. So because, you know, you're, you're, you're verbally fluent and, and um, you like to engage in that sort of thing. Um, so that's a positive emotion dimension. It's associated with the positive emotion that you feel when you're moving towards desired things. Mm-hmm. Um, and the next dimension is sometimes it's called neuroticism and sometimes it's called Lots negative emotionality. <laughs> well, Big on neuroticism. people who are high in neuroticism uh, have some anticipatory anxiety. Um, you know, you know, you have anticipatory anxiety if you're worried about going somewhere yep. and it really bugs you. And then you get there and like 20 minutes later, you're calm and it's OK. Big time. So, Every yeah. single time. Big time. <laughs> okay. Every week. OK. OK. Yeah. So that's withdrawal. That's that's an aspect of, of neuroticism known as withdrawal. And the other aspect is volatility and volatile people are touchy and irritable. Huh. So, and, and that's, that's the second dimension. The third dimension is agreeableness and agreeable people are compassionate and polite Hmm. Hmm. and disagreeable people are competitive and blunt. Hmm. And so women are higher in agreeableness than men. Um, So if you take a random man and a random woman out of the population, general population, and you bet on who is more agreeable. If you bet on the woman, you'd be right 60% of the time. Yeah. And the other place where men and women differ is with trait neuroticism. Women are more susceptible to anxiety and depression. So if but how you, can you say that if genders don't exist? Well, yeah, that, that's okay. another thing yeah. that I'm general, genuinely <laughs> accused of is that biological essentialism. Yeah, then, uh, but uh, what do, I feel like I'm experiencing those different feelings depending on the day. Yeah. Sometimes I'm more extroverted. Some days I'm more reclusive. You know, uh, is it generally... That's probably volatility, too. It's mm. like variation okay. in mm. mood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So have you ever had periods of depression? Yeah. How long? I mean, you don't have to tell me. No, obviously. I can tell you. It's okay. In college, I'd say a couple of years. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a long time. Well, yeah. so that would be an indication. Well, it could be an indication of many things. Mm. But that's often associated with higher levels of trait neuroticism. Because you see, it isn't obvious how much negative emotion you should feel. Like, let's say you wake up in the morning and you have an ache in your side. It's like, well, is that nothing or cancer? Mm-hmm. Well, you don't know. Like, you shouldn't jump to the whole cancer conclusion. Right. But I would. would. Immediately. Well, but you can't tell, eh? Like, it's yeah. not necessary. Like, and you think, well, if it is cancer and you miss it, well, that's not so good. Yeah. You know, so sometimes <coughs> there's some utility in being on edge all the time, especially in a dangerous sure. environment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. The next dimension is conscientiousness, and conscientious people are industrious, Mm -hmm. and so they're guilty if they're not working. Hmm. They have to work. Yeah, I have that. You're like that. It's brutal. It's awful. I hate it. Yeah. Because I'm very self-aware of it. Like, um, I feel like I can never relax. Right. And I feel like I never got anything done. Right, right. Okay, so so we figured out why that is, okay? The reason is, is you're conscientious, Mm. so that's associated often with, well, feelings of shame or guilt if you haven't got what you should have got done. Mm-hmm. And then if you're also high in negative emotion, then you worry about that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so that's, that, that can be rough. And so, and the last dimension is openness and openness is basically interest in ideas and creativity, essentially. Mm-hmm. And so if you take this test at understandmyself.com, it will tell you where you are in relationship to 10,000 other people mm-hmm. on those mm-hmm. dimensions. And it's useful for, cu- we're going to make a couples version of it so that you'll get a, re- we haven't got it up yet. So you'll have a report saying, well, you know, you're really orderly and you're not. And so you're going to have tension in your relationship because yeah. the orderly person is always going to be annoyed by your disorderliness <laughs> and end up cleaning up after you all the time. And so you're going to have to be aware of that because that's going to be, and you know, you're open and your partner isn't. Well, you're going to want to go to plays and movies and read books and discuss ideas, and they're not going to be interested in that at all. And, you know, you kind of think of those as opinions, but they're really deeply rooted. No, it sounds... So, are we doomed to, to just possess these characteristics that we hate about ourselves, even if we're self-aware of it? 
How do no, you uh, how do you address these issues of self improvement? Okay, well, people get more conscientious and more and less neurotic and more agreeable as they get older. Mm. So you could think about that perhaps as the development of wisdom. I also mm. think that you can you can learn the opposite traits through practicing micro habits. So, for example, in my clinical practice, I've often had introverted people who need to act in an extroverted way in order, say, to be successful lawyers because they have to go out and drum up business. They have to meet with people. Right. And they can learn the habits of an extroverted person, but they have mm. to learn them from the bottom up. Mm. It's, it's not natural to them. And if you're not very conscientious, for example, like a schedule is learning how to use a, a schedule mm -hmm. and then learning how to stick to it can be really useful, as can making a life plan.